Imagine being so self-absorbed that you don't realize your publisher's customers buy your work. So they're your customers too. And insulting them means they won't buy your work. So publishers won't hire you because your books don't sell. Or in short, imagine being an asshole. So this tweet by Ron Mars made the rounds. Your boy Zach already did the video I wanted to do. So you can check out his vid to see an in-depth reading of Ronnie's brain farts. What I want to talk about is this attitude so many comic book professionals have about treating fans with respect. I'm trying to figure it out and I just can't. I can't come up with a reason why anybody trying to get someone to buy something from them thinks it's a good idea to attack that person. I genuinely don't understand this mentality. And the weird thing is, it's solely limited to comic book professionals. I haven't seen anyone else act like this. Even when they're assholes, they still understand these are your customers. But the comic book pros say things like, quote, Writers are hired by publishers. Publishers sell to retailers. And retailers sell to fans. So my client is the publisher, not the fan. <laughs> Pumpkin, you're only being hired by the publisher because your books sell. If no one buys your books, retailers won't order more of them. If retailers don't order more of them, publishers won't hire you because you're not profitable. In the words of Christian Bale, What don't you fucking understand? Why are you treating people like they're beneath you? You write comic books, dude. Check your ego. And I think the ego thing is at least part of this. And boy, do people like Ron Mars have massive egos. That's probably why he's such a big asshole, because with his head being wedged so firmly up his own ass, he can't help but have a gaping hole. He went on a Twitter rant, you can check DNC's video, calling potential customers turds in a punch bowl. Could you imagine any other field where someone referred to their customers like this and kept getting work? Ron Mars and Kurt Busiek and people like them harp on that word customer. Well, fine, don't use that word, even though it accurately describes the group we're talking about. Don't use fans either. Like one of my friends would say to feminists when they would attack him and men's rights activists and male victims, these are other people you're talking to. That's another human being. And you're sitting there degrading them because what? They want a different story? They don't want female characters to look like men? They don't want their favorite characters replaced? They're not interested in your 85th hot take on Donald Trump? This is why you treat them like garbage and do it online because you would never do this in person. You're so brave online. I don't need your money, Intel. <laughs> but you never dare say any of this at a convention. One, because you get slapped so hard we'd have to identify you by your bone marrow. And two, you know all those people around you can hear you. You know that if you get into it with someone on the floor, everyone's going to see how you act. And so you don't act that way in person. But when you get online, you think this gives you the right to just unleash on people. Check his Twitter feed. Don't talk to him. Just check his feed and look at the outlandish shit he says about conservatives, Christians, Trump supporters, Trump, the U.S. Just insane shit. Who do you think you're winning over by doing that, Ron? Oh, you get your little pee, -pee touches from the folks who cosplay as Pedal Bear, but everyone gets to see what you're writing. Do you think people who agree with your politics aren't turned off by you calling anyone who likes Spider-Man over Miles Morales turds in a punch bowl? And I love how they can say these horrible things about other people, but then get sensitive when someone does it back. This guy tweeted this in response to Ron's tweet, quote, By incorrectly framing it as customer service, gators get to fall back on customer is always right, which in and of itself is a wildly out of touch mindset that was created in an era where the customer didn't start an interaction by telling you to go F yourself. Well, in that era, neither did the creator. But we live in current year where people like Mars, Busick, Larson, Slot, Waite, Zercher, Lehman, and Simone insult people unprompted. You don't have to take my word for it. Go look at their feeds. Don't talk to them. Just look at what they tweet. Insult after insult after insult tweeted on their own without anybody saying a word to them. You don't get to insult people and then whine when they insult you back. And keep in mind, this stuff doesn't happen in a vacuum. No one's just randomly coming up to you and going, go fuck yourself. You gotta do something to set them off. It doesn't mean them cussing you out is valid, just that it's probably what prompted that reaction. 
So it's not like someone just dropped by Ron's Twitter account and went, fuck you. It's more like Ron sat there mouthing off about how he hopes Trump supporters die in AIDS riddle fire or something equally ridiculous. And then someone who's a conservative fan drops by his feed, sees the tweet and says, hey man, I voted for Trump, go fuck yourself. And even then, you don't have to react in kind. When Sean Gordon Murphy announced Batman White Knight, a bunch of people went, oh no, he got woke. He didn't respond with, go gargle jism, you incel neckbeard. He said, hey, I'm very far to the left, but this isn't that kind of book. I haven't even finished writing it yet. Let me write it, put it out, and then if you think it sucks, you can tell me all about it. And that got people to calm down. When I tweeted last year that Spider-Man isn't gay, that brought out all the snowbodies, and they called me all kinds of names. I could have said, listen, you miserable little punk packets, shut the fuck up before I skull fuck some sense into you. But I didn't. I don't have to insult them. They already look bad. But you, you just insult away, claiming that the comic book industry isn't cooked to order but a grocery store where you choose what you want. No, it's more like an all-you-can-eat buffet. You can pick what you want, but you still expect the food to be properly prepared. Actually, it's more like a regular restaurant where they serve certain types of food. But you guys have come in and decided to change the menu. Not by actually changing the menu given to the customers, but by changing the foods used to prepare the dishes. If I go to a steakhouse and order a well-done steak, even if it's not cooked the way I want, I still expect to get a steak, not a plate of eggs. And I don't expect the chef to get pissy with me when I complain about the food because I'm not his client. His client is the manager. <laughs> That's the shit you're pulling. And the thing is, you keep forgetting that everyone else can see what you're doing. You may feel totally righteous in attacking some conservative fan, and you may even get backpacks from your fellow pros and some of your SJW fans. But there are plenty of other conservatives who never comment, who see you acting like that and go, I'm done with him. And you may be fine with that because most comic book fans lean to the left. So you're only alienating about 40, 45 percent of your audience. But that doesn't mean the other 55 percent agree with what you did. A good chunk of those moderates and centrists will be turned off. And a number of the far lefties who agree with your politics might think it was too far too. So instead of turning off 45% of the people, you may have turned off 70, 80% of the people. And for what? So you can own someone on Twitter? See, the people who would have supported your book are the people you're insulting. And by doing that, you take away any reason they have to ever buy any of your books. And I'm sure you don't care, but here's the thing, Ron. There's this thing called word of mouth. When you like something, you tell other people, hey, you should check this out. And they do the same thing. Think of how many movies, shows, books, albums, and games you checked out, sight unseen, because someone told you you'd like it. Now, think about how many movies, shows, books, games, restaurants, dealerships, cable services, brands, and companies you avoid because someone told you they suck. That's what you're not factoring in. It's not just Comics Gate won't buy any of your comics, or conservatives won't buy any of your comics. It's that they'll tell other people not to buy them. And the same goes for those moderates and centrists and progressives who were turned off by how you treated people. They're not going to buy them, and they're going to tell other people not to buy them too. This is why you should be nice to customers or fans or people, whatever you want to call them. Because one of them might have a channel with 70,000 subscribers and three times as many unsubscribed viewers, meaning about 200,000 people see that person's videos. So when he says, don't buy anything written by Ron Mars. Don't buy any new books, don't buy any old books, don't buy any used books. Even if there's an artist on the book you absolutely love, don't buy Ron Mars's books because he thinks you're turds in a punch bowl. When he says that, it might have an impact. But what do I know? Well, I know you shouldn't buy anything written by Ron Mars because he thinks they're shit, literal shit in a punch bowl. Don't buy Ron Mars's books.